Hello and good evening Rambler fans. It was another eventful week in Rambler sports. We saw women's soccer take down the Illinois State Redbirds to earn a spot in the Missouri Valley Conference semifinals. And the cross country team made a strong appearance at the Missouri Valley Conference Championships with three Ramblers earning all MVC accolades. All this and more are coming up on the Rambler Sports Locker. Thanks for tuning in to the Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Connor Ruddy. And I'm Fredo, Al Fredo. Our top story tonight is Loyola women's soccer team. Our mighty Ramblers booked a place in the Missouri Valley Conference semifinals after defeating the Illinois State Redbirds 2-1 last Saturday. Loyola recorded their first win over in-state rival since 2007. It was a perfect day for Loyola in central Illinois as the Ramblers came out attacking since the opening whistle. Sophomore Evalon Saint Ramon gave Loyola an early lead 10 minutes into the game. Four minutes later, junior Shelby Koch amplified the Rambler lead after scoring a 25-yard free kick. Sophomore goalkeeper Matty Ford made two important saves to keep the Ramblers at the two-goal advantage. Loyola controlled the game and kept their lead until 44 seconds before the end of regulation time when the Redbirds scored their only goal. With these results, the Ramblers secured their first victory in the conference tournament since joining the Valley. The Maroon and Gold will play the conference semifinals against Drake at 3.30 p.m. in Evansville. We will now send it over to Jake Mazinki for this week's By the Numbers, where he will give us an ode to Fetty Wap. Thanks, guys. Sadly, this is our first week without baseball. After a fantastic World Series, the Kansas City Royals have come out victorious. Although I wish the Cubs would have won, I want to give Kansas City the credit that they deserve. In honor of the Royals, my number this week will be 1738. Well, more like 17 and 38. Besides good baseball, the Royals were known for their comical post-game interviews. After the games, the players would be sure to say 1738 when talking to reporters. This number references a line in the popular Fetty Wap song, Trap Queen. If quoting Fetty Wap was good enough for the World Series champs, I figured it would be good for Rambler Sports Soccer. So let's start with the number 17. Last year, junior hitter Thomas Jeschke led the Ramblers to their second national title in as many years. He was a two-time All-American for the Ramblers and was the American Volleyball Coaches Association Player of the Year in 2015. Jeschke decided to forego his senior season and play professional volleyball in Poland and focus on preparing for the 2016 Olympic Games. We're now going to take you back a little bit and go to the number 38. On February 11, 2014, the Loyola men's basketball team lost to the Bradley Braves 55-38. to This was a low point in the season for the Ramblers, but don't worry, better days were yet to come. That same season, the Ramblers beat Bradley in their first ever Missouri Valley Conference Tournament game with the help of a Milton Doyle buzzer beater. Since then, Loyola has won a total of 24 games, while Bradley has only won nine. Being held to 38 points was the kickstart that the Ramblers needed. Now back to 17. Chicago Bears wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey sports the number 17. The Bears' re best receiving target has struggled with injury this season, but number 17 redeemed himself last week. He torched the Minnesota secondary for 116 yards and a touchdown. Although the Bears lost the game, Jay Cutler must be happy to have his favorite target back on the field. Now, not many people wear the number 38, but I didn't have to deep, dig deep to find one. One of my favorite players, Carlos Sembrano, wore the number 38 when he played for the Cubs. Big Z was a starting pitcher for the Cubs in, during the 2003 season when they missed the World Series because of one fan who will remain nameless. Sambrano was known just as much for his fiery tempo as he was for his fastball and was a mainstay in the Cubs rotation for 10 years. That's all we have for day, today in this week's edition of By the Numbers. Special thanks to Fetty Wap for the inspiration and back to you guys at the desk. Thanks Jake, you're my trap queen. It's clear that Rambler fans are excited for the high expectations of the upcoming men's basketball season. Season ticket sales have already increased 15% from last year. The men's basketball team enters the season coming off its best campaign in 30 years. Last season, the Ramblers won 24 games and were the college basketball invitational champions. 
Increased ticket sales are expected to help the team carry last year's momentum into the season, where Gentile Arena could be more packed than ever before. More fans will help create a hostile environment for opposing teams. Rambler Sports Locker reporter Jake Mazinke was ordered to talk to Rambler's head coach Porter Moser about the increased ticket sales. Moser said he's excited that more people have already committed to come to the games. I tell you what, the, the fans are part of us. Everybody has a home court advantage in college basketball. We want to create one here and we need your help. The Ramblers open their regular season on November 13th against the University of Texas San Antonio and Gentile Arena. The women's basketball team won its second preseason game against Lewis University in an overtime thriller Wednesday. But the biggest story of the night occurred outside of the box of the box score. Star forward Taylor Manuel was injured during the game and left the court in a wheelchair with an apparent leg injury. Manuel was a second team All Missouri Valley Conference performer for the Ramblers last season. The severity of the injury is still unknown. Ramble, Ramble athletes have had a recent history of representing Team USA in athletic competitions, mostly from the men's volleyball team. This time, it's the new assistant softball coach, Blake Keller, has more. Ever have the opportunity to play for Team USA? Well, for Loyola's softball assistant coach, Brittany Cervantes, she says she can. Cervantes may be a softball star now, but she claims she never used to be. She actually started her sports career as a soccer player. After being influenced to try out softball at 10 years old, Cervantes says she wasn't a very good player. Couldn't hit the ball, couldn't do a thing. Then uh, finally realized that I couldn't see, so I got contact, and that kind of changed everything. Her career took off, eventually earning her a scholarship at the University of Kentucky, where the team found success. All four years we made it to postseason, which was an accomplishment for us. Cervantes took off to Chicago to play professionally for the Chicago Bandits shortly after. In 2013, Cervantes was named assistant coach for the Ramblers softball team. She's an awesome coach. Um, she helps all of us and just improve and be the best athletes we are. Her softball story doesn't stop there. Cervantes was notified she was selected to attend a Team USA selection camp in hopes to play at the World Keep Cup, going. Japan Cup, and the World Baseball Softball Confederation Women's World Championship. Cervantes' first reaction... I was kind of in shock. Um, I guess I never really expected to get that. I mean, um, just never was a thought in my mind. Obviously, like, the goal is to play for your country. That's what, I think that's everybody's dream, to play for their country. And, uh, yeah, I think I was just in shock, and then it just became excited. Cervantes will attend the camp in January. She is one out of 43 invitees. Only 17 players will make the roster. Cervantes views the Team USA selection camp as a learning experience, something she has never done before, in hope to look at other players and the way that they work and the way that they practice, in hope to bring that back to the softball program so that ultimately they will benefit. For Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Blake Keller. Good luck at Team USA camp, Brittany. Loyola women's volleyball team bounced back from a five-set loss to Southern Illinois University by defeating the University of Evansville three sets to one on October 31st. Senior Maureen Carls dominated with a season-high 14 kills, and freshman Amanda Cushion added 12 of her own to help the Ramblers. Loyola blasted out to a 13-3 lead in the first set and set the pace for a dominating victory. The Ramblers lost the second set by a close score and battled off a comeback effort from Evansville to take the final two sets and win the match. The team played Indiana State on Thursday and will face Illinois State on Friday. Loyola's men's soccer team fought back to earn a 1-1 draw against Drake last Saturday. The result extends the Ramblers' home unbeaten run to 19 games. Freshman Connor Stevenson saved the day for the Ramblers by scoring his second goal of the season with just under four minutes remaining in the second half. The Ramblers extended their unbeaten record to eight games in a row being six of them victories and outscoring their opponents by 12 to 1. Everything is good news for the men's soccer team. Last week, senior goalkeeper Tim Dobrowolski wrote a new page in Loyola's record history. Dobrowolski notched the 23rd clean sheet of his career, breaking former Ramblers Brian Beerness, who was at 22. The Ramblers now stand fourth in the MVC with a 2-1-2 conference record. Loyola's cross-country team earned a fourth-place finish at the Missouri Valley Conference Championships on October 31st with a 102-point performance.
The team was led by Sidney Stunkel, who ran a season best 17.34 with Erica Levisted, who ran a personal best time of 17.36 right behind her. Each collected a top 15 finish for the Ramblers while also earning all MVC accolades. Jake Brown earned his first all-conference honors, leading the men to a sixth place finish. The South has always been known for their pride, especially when it comes to football. But the boys of the Midwest have something to say about that. Let's head to the Rumble to talk about this college football conference rivalry. Hello and welcome to this week's Ramble. I'm your host, Bridget Murphy, and I'm here with Justin Sanchez and Dylan Conover. We're here today to talk about college football. Last year, when college football switched from the ranking system to the new college playoff system, they, the South seemed unstoppable with the SEC. But we know how that turned out last time. So today we're here to debate the Big Ten versus the SEC. Dylan, what do you think? Well, I should start off by saying that um, I don't really have a favorite college football team, so I think that this gives me a, a perfect bird's eye view of this whole thing, a very objective a very objective opinion. And if we're comparing just the SEC to the Big Ten, it, you got to go with the SEC. It's, it's really obvious. And I know a lot of uh, Big Ten fans are clamoring that, you know, they are the recent, you know, football champions. They, they have a lot of teams in the top ten rankings currently right now. But it's all-time. The SEC holds the all-time ranking or um, record 84 to 57 and one tie. Um, in the FBS era of the national championship, the SEC has, I believe, seven of the 15, while the Big Ten has one. Uh, it's really lopsided. The SEC, if you're going to be objective about it, you have to go with the SEC. Some strong points about history. Justin? Well, notice that is history, um, and we're talking about the current situation between the SEC and Big Ten. So I'm actually affiliated with the uh, Big Ten uh, as a Hawkeyes fan. Um, and right now, as an undefeated team, the Hawkeyes have wins over 59 percent, or their wins, the people they have beat have wins that equal up to 59 percent, which is the highest number in undefeated teams right now. Um, and that includes uh, um, Clemson and the other SEC teams in the top 10 um, for the first initial rankings. Uh, also, the Iowa defense is one of the best in the nation uh, at 4.36 yards per, uh, per play. Um, and also has one of the best cornerbacks in the game right now uh, as with Desmond King having seven interceptions so far this season. Um, Iowa has a great chance at finishing 13-0 and uh, and getting into that Big Ten championship. Their next four games, uh, their opponents have only won three games uh, through the Big Ten conference compared to Iowa's four already. Okay, Dylan, you have a lot about the past, but talking about the future of college football here, what do you have to counter that? Well, if we're going to talk about the future, just give me a second. I just want to make a quick correction. You mentioned that, um, that the Iowa, first of all, which is only one team within a larger conference, which contains teams such as Purdue, who haven't had any really good players since Drew Brees. You mentioned they have a win against Clemson, who you attributed to the SEC, which, in fact, is not true. Clemson is not in the SEC. They're in the ACC. So you made a little bit of a mistake there. Now, they, Iowa has had some good wins. You know, there is a lot of speculation that if they win out in convincing fashion that they will make it to the college football championship, or at least the playoffs. But I still want to dwell a little bit on the past. If you look at the past NFL drafts, we'll just look back to this last, this last spring. In the, there were 54 SEC players taken in the draft. That's once again the most out of any conference in all of football. Um, the Big Ten in comparison at 35. Looking towards the future, I mean, it's always a wild card. You know, it's kind of like March Madness in basketball. It's a Cinderella story. And as always, the future is unpredictable. You know, like we said, Iowa could make it in. Who knows? And once it's in the football playoffs, who knows? You know, Ohio State was the four seed going into the first champ or playoff last year. And, you know, history speaks for itself. They won the whole thing. But if we're looking at who's the best right now, you can't look at the future. And the only way you can look at who's the best right now is by looking at what it is right now based on what it is in the past. And there are two SEC teams in the top four teams right now. It's, you got to go with what you can see right in front of you. Speculation is, is pretty much worthless. We've seen how it's always different every time we try. Justin, Dylan made some good points about Iowa being only one team in the Big Ten. What do you have to say about the Big Ten versus the SEC as a conference as a whole? Well, as a conference as a whole, Ohio State is a power team uh, right now. And given the fact that the SEC has had several uh, dominating seasons and obviously dominating past uh, with NFL recruiting, um, 
right now Ohio State uh, and coming from a Hawkeye fan Ohio State has a stack team that has several players that can go first round in the draft um, so given that past I'm still looking ahead at the future still looking at what's happening right now um, Ohio State is undefeated so is Iowa um, and that that brings good points for the Big Ten in the future um, so I think in the future and coming up in this next in this next couple weeks uh, the Big Ten will emerge and will end up bringing home the national championship again um, last year Ohio State was ranked 16th uh, and they turned out to win the national championship so I think that has a lot to speak for itself Right now, as it stands, I'm going to have to say that Dylan wins on the basis of the history of the SEC and the fact that the rankings right now, at least in the top, say that the um, SEC does have more powerful teams. So we're going to go with Dylan for the winner. Back to you guys at the desk. The SEC and Big Ten might be good, but Loyola has been undefeated since 1870. I'm pretty sure I have that one on a t-shirt. Can you believe the Royals won their first World Series since 1985? Well, it's certainly nice to see a team that hasn't won it in a long time take home the trophy this year, but I think we all know one team that'll probably never break its curse, if you know what I mean. Well, that team has had 107 years to think about, about it, but unfortunately, all the time we have, that's all the time we have. I'm Alfredo Rodriguez. And I'm Connor Ruddy. Tune into next week's episode of the Rambler Sports Locker for an up-to-date look at Loyola Sports and beyond. And as always, don't forget to turn out the lights. Thank you.